So here's another piece too about what students could do. And again, this is leaning the horse around. She had, I think it's the last slide she prepared. But this was um, <clears throat> her getting an ice cream cone and then rubbing it in Timothy's face that she got an ice cream cone and he didn't. Um, so this is, this is them playing and horsing around. But what was it? Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother, which is huge. It says it clearly in the Bible as a commandment. Now, the other thing too is honor them unconditionally. And and this piece here, this, this is, a, by the way, this is a, 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 a wedding a tea ceremony. Um, and uh, I did this to my in-laws. Um, I did this to my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and I got on my knees. Um, and <clears throat> to be honest with you, I didn't think my father-in-law liked me very much at all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I think Joe, I think Joe, I got Joe for advice, I saw all these other people advice. And, 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 and honestly, I, I thought I was also marrying the Chinese mafia. I thought I was gonna, I was gonna lose my life. Uh, but you know what? I was in love, right? So you know, you do crazy things when you're in love, right? But um, when I did this to my father-in-law, by, by the way, um, these, this couple's on their knees. We, Josh and I only got on our knees for my dad and her mother and father. <clears throat> And so I got on my knees, <clears throat> and I held the teacup like an American, uh, right? So I got on my knees, and I, <laughs> I took the teacup, and I gave it to him like this, and I bowed like that. What I was supposed to do was put my two hands together and bow, right? Yeah. And um, he took it, and he laughed, and then in the middle of the ceremony, he reached over and gave me a kiss. Wow. I was like... Come on, <laughs> right? I was shocked. I was shocked. But the point was, honor thy father and mother is huge, and it wins over the parent. And hopefully, hopefully, his Josh's mother and father will enter the church one day. That's our goal. That's our dream. So the honor thy father oh, and mother, and I, I spoke to this once in front of I kid you not, probably four hundred kids at this Protestant gathering with um, the, the, our leader China was also invited. And, was, and I was the keynote speaker, and I said this in front of, I kid you not, easily, probably over 350, 400 kids. And I said, unconditionally, it doesn't say, honor thy father and mother if they give me a phone. It doesn't say, honor thy father and mother to give me a play box station. It doesn't say, honor thy father and mother to give me a car. It says, honor thy father and mother, no matter what, if, ands, or buts. This is what we're called to do, and, we, and it says also in the Bible too, we will be rewarded if we do this. So this piece is huge for our kids. They need to learn this and do it over again. By the way, when I did that talk, <clears throat> I must have had probably 15 kids come up to me and go, yeah, but you don't understand. You don't, you don't live with my mom and dad. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. They, they drive me crazy. And I go, no, 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 no. It doesn't say love my father and mother if they drive me crazy or not. <laughs> it says honor thy father and mother. Period. And we need to practice that. And, and I, I assure you, for, for me, that has been rewarded in full from a man who, quite honestly, would not, when I walked in a room, he'd go, hmm. That's how my father in law would greet me. Mm. <laughs> to kiss me on my wedding day, I'll take it. If I could do it for honoring that father and mother. Okay, so what are the ways they could serve? So, can they help around in the house? Uh, can they help another sibling? For some, why do you think they're entitled to club men? Now, what I'm saying, threefold here. Can they help around the house and stuff? So I want our kids to serve. If they could serve, they realize, holy smoke, I got it pretty good here because I'm not doing this all the time. Secondly, can they help a sibling because all siblings need help? That's how they build relationships. And my brothers and sisters who helped me out, I'm still grateful to this day. Because they helped me, I needed that help. And at the same time too, I want to reciprocate that. That's what brothers and sisters are all about. That's what family finding is about. Now I say this club men, because there are numerous times being a counselor, I'm talking to kids and I say to them, hey, uh, you know, hey, uh, so let me get something straight. You have poor grades, do you have a job? Do you have responsibilities for your siblings after school? No. The parents are sitting right there in the conference with me. So you have no job, right? You don't have to take care of siblings. 
you're supposed to get grades that are good or passing, and you're failing a couple of classes. And these are Asian families too. What are you doing? What are you doing? Then I turn to the Asian parents, and I say, they're living in Club Med. I, I wish I had what they had. I just sit around all day, watch TV, chill, you know, I don't do anything, and they're failing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Have them serve. Have them serve, and they need to serve. By the way, this is my godmother, and my brother here, and these are my nephews here. They're, we, I took this picture purposely because she served us. You know, my family didn't pick a Chinese godparents. They, my mom and dad were brilliant. They picked two ladies who were both married, but unfortunately could not have children. So I said, hey, would you like to help out these poor little, six little old young children? <laughs> would you like to help these out? So this lady is my godmother. And she taught me about hot chocolate. And hot chocolate with marshmallows. And chocolate chip cookies. And pizza. All the things my parents didn't know about. How wonderful. How wonderful. So what are we doing there? We're having these kids serve her. Because that's the way to do it. So they learn how to serve, they learn how to care. That's important in this crazy world of ours, that we should take care of our loved ones. Finally, give gratefulness is a gift from God. Appreciate the culture that has been given to you. One day you will lose it. And that culture, will be lo you lose it when you lose your parents. Um, and thank your parents, one day you won't be able to. And again, I wish there were more kids here because that, that's huge, that's huge. You know, um, you know, when my mom passed away, my sisters tried to make some dishes that my mom made. We couldn't do it. No matter how much they tried, we couldn't do it. The, 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 even the, the smell, the essence of the home was gone. It's gone. And so you're going to lose out. And so kids need to be learned to be grateful for what they have, especially the parents. I mean, I, hey, I've been an orphan now for 10 years. I, I would die to give my dad a hug or a kiss. And so that, those days are gone. Don't lose out without cherishing every moment. Um, and then asking for advice from a parent can uh, be very rewarding. Um, so I, I was stressing this too, and, and, and maybe Joe can reiterate this too, but um, every promotion I've gotten, every, every uh, advancement that I got in my career, I purposely would call my dad. I'd call him up and say, hey, Dad, what do you think? And I found out later he appreciated that so much because I always wanted to know his son still needs. And that's, that's important, that we can do, we can show them that we still need our parents and our loved ones um, before, unfortunately, we can lose out. And then last, but not least, I'm sorry, stop. find time for the family. Uh, just because you're growing up doesn't mean that you're going away. And this is something that we're fighting Ling Ling, left and right. Just to have a little more time with us, Ling Ling. How about spending more time with us, honey? And she's giving it. So, um, when Caitlin went away to college, um, it was a day I feared for 18 years. I did. I, fe I feared it. And I remember going downstairs, and we were all getting ready. Um, we were having breakfast. And Timothy goes, Daddy, why, why are you so sad? He knew. I couldn't hide it. And I went upstairs, and I started crying. Because my little girl was going away. Now, she's only 45 minutes away. <laughs> but... It was far enough for me. And the point is, those special times you got to cherish. Um, and I was going to say to kids, too, they spend more time with their cell phone than they do with their family. Do they spend more time just doing this? I mean, I'm amazed that sometimes when I go to a Chinese restaurant and I look at all these Chinese families there, and the kids are doing this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and the parents are out there with the newspaper. <laughs> Right? How many times have seen that at a Chinese restaurant? A parent's in the newspaper. I mean, why are they bring the newspaper? So the parents on the newspaper, the kids on the cell phone. Oh, that's really good parenting, parenting uh, family bonding time. They need that bonding time. It's a special time. This little girl, by the way, is uh, Andrew and Olivia Chang's uh, daughter. And the reason I want to share with you that is because they stand at a house. And this is a great learning experience for Timothy because he had never had a little sibling before. So he learned to be a big brother. And that was awesome. 
that, that he got that wonderful experience. And you could just look at that joy. That's what I'm talking about, good family bonding time. So that's what they do. So in summary, for our kids, they need to, to um, bottom line, to honor. They need to be giving, and they need to serve, and they need also time. Those are the four things for the kids. We're going to go on because of, uh, for, the, for the kids here, please, got a time check here, too. Uh, what can parents and students do together? And it's the importance of prayer. Uh, family prays together, stays together. And I'm not just talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm talking about throughout the day. I'm going to share that more about that. How, how can you expect them to follow Jesus if you do not? So prayer is huge in the family. Um, can, you, can we all be, we are supposed to be, the first inspiration for our children? And yet, how come sometimes a kid, and I've seen this happen too, I had a youth group with about 40 kids, and I said, how many of you guys can pray with your parents? <laughs> Raise your hand. How, how many can pray with your parents? And only like four or five could. So five out of 40? How could, how could that be? So we have to teach them over to pray again and model for them. And what ways can they prosper? And so let me share with you too, uh, and Lily shared with me, she gave me permission to share this too. When Lily was little, she went, woke up one day, and she went downstairs. She, she climbed downstairs, and she was like six or seven. And she sees her mother on her knees praying. And she's praying on the couch, and Josh is praying on the couch, and having what, what she calls quiet time, quiet time with the Lord. And to this day, Caitlin Lingley remembers that. And she looked at him. She, she told me this. She told me to Jesus. I looked at him and said, wow, if my mom is doing this, and it's early in the morning, it must be important. So what did she do? She started praying in the morning. Ma, good modeling, good prayer throughout the day is so beneficial for our kids. So I want to share with you the O Young prayer schedule that we try to follow. And we've been doing this for many years. And we make Timothy pray. <laughs> we make that little guy pray. Now, it's not the deepest. It's not something that, it, that Pope Francis would want to hear, maybe, in, in terms of sharing with others. But you know what? It's from his heart. That's good enough for the Lord. That's good enough for the Lord. So, I have the Oyo family. He prays for the upcoming week. Joshi prays for her family on Tuesday. Timothy or Lingley, who is home for our church family and for our Godchildren, which we've got to do a better job here. We, we, we don't do good. We talked about not doing this well enough, but we try to do that. Then I pray for our friends and our school workplace. And then we pray for the weekend. And then Saturday, we try to bring in everything together. But the point was oh, by the way, when I leave in the morning, when I leave in the morning, what do I do? We always get together, we say a little prayer. And we pray for safety, that everyone's safe that leaving safe in college, and we say amen, we give each other hugs, and we go. But the point was, I want it known that our family's going to pray. And Josh is the one to stress this. And this is not the easiest thing in the world, I admit it, especially when I'm watching like a football game on Monday night, and they go, come on, let's pray! I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. And I go up there, to follow the Holy Spirit, and <laughs> do my thing, and I go down. No, but I try to have our prayer life dominated by that it's throughout the day of importance. And that's something that we've got to push for. The other thing, too, is what well, compared to together, do not let the sun go down in anger. When I said, well, listen, 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 that's a Bible verse. Do not let the sun go down in anger. And Joshua is great at this for us. She is really strict with me. Because sometimes when I get angry, I turn into a little baby boy. <laughs> An angry baby boy. And I'm like this. And Joshua says, no, we are talking about this. And we talk, and we don't let the sun go down in anger. Can you imagine if every family did this? You know how close families could be if we just listened to that good Bible verse? You know how families could be healed instead of letting their wounds hurt and linger? So it's very important that we do this. And this is some different quotes. When I'm mad at you, you really listen to me. Um, and that's huge. That's something that Leeming said about me, and it was, I took it as a compliment, but why I'm sharing that is because she knows I'm listening. And so when you're angry, really show them that you're listening. I, I, I can say, hold, 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 hold up. I'm listening. Please share. Calm down. 
and really look them in the eye to eye. Really share your heart. And then, I can't bring up things with my family members, this is what kids said, they don't listen! And they're too defensive. They don't want to hear when you're, why you're upset, when something is brought up, it's not something that is wrong against them, it is something that bothers oneself, in other words, it can be changed. So here a kid is basically saying, I want to change, I want to talk to you, but you're not even willing to listen. So this one piece about not ending in anger, not letting when the sun goes down, try to follow this rule. This is, this is really beneficial for our kids. And they don't lose out on an opportunity to heal. And by the way, they'll also sleep a heck of a lot better at night. Finally, what can parents and students do together? Family time. Can you worship and study together? Can you serve the church together? Can you study the saints together? You know? So, um, and also, can you spend 1% of your day with the Lord? So 1% is 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Well, actually, 14 minutes and 40 seconds. Can you spend 1% of your day with the Lord? 1%. It's not asking a lot, but it can mean a big difference. Um, there's a saint book that... that Joshua uses to read with Timothy. And so while he's eating breakfast, snorting a ton of food, eating like there's no room for tomorrow to eat, Joshua's reading him about a saint. And then you know what? To our surprise, he's listening. <laughs> and he's asking questions. How cool is that? So he can remember the saints in the future. This is the saint book that we use with him. But the point was, we're trying to learn time together. This picture here is Joshua, um, uh, Ling Ling, Timothy, and I going on a mission trip with uh, Bethlehem Farm. And so here we are, they're working together to paint a house for an elderly man who could not do it nor afford it. But the point is, they learn so much from this. And this is an opportunity where the kids really learn to. Um, know what it means to serve the poor. Really know what it means to serve the poor. That's a tremendous gift for our students. That they know how to serve the poor, so they only hear the cries of the poor that the Lord is telling them what to do. By the way, um, uh, for this piece here, there are other different resources that we have. So I wanted to spend some time talking about USCCB. Real quick, there's a website. You can kind of USCCB, there's a lot of Dante. And then there's different books. And, there's books that I brought here, Why We're Catholic, that I tried to sell to all of Our Lady of China. And this guy by the name of Trent Horn. It's good, good apologetics. And we should all learn to defend our faith. So I brought these books here, some extra ones here, if you guys are willing to, wanted to take one. Um, and I bought them um, bulk, so only three bucks. For your, there's another book, Made This Way. Made This Way, that's by Trent Horn, too, and Layla Miller. By the way, when I went to the ADW conference, you know, there's a question about this. No one knew the answer. There were 250 people in the room, and no one knew the answer. So I stood my hand up, and that's how come I'm here today, because I wanted to talk about something like that. So do we, can we defend our faith in this crazy world of ours about cohabitation, transgender, about uh, reproductive technologies, about um, um, uh, divorce, all these different issues here, sex outside of marriage, well, can you talk to your kid about it? And we can learn about taxes and how to do our taxes, that we should be able to learn how to, to defend our faith. So this is something that's huge that we want to do. And then also, maybe read a book together with the kids. Matthew Kelly's a great author. He's sold a ton of books. And he tries to, he's, he has clear data of parishes growing because all they do at Christmas time and Easter is give his books away. So people read it, and they get an aha moment. Oh my goodness, maybe I should follow the church and the teachings of Jesus Christ. How cool is that? And so they follow it, and bam, their memberships in churches grow. I think we should do it for all the Asian churches. Just give them away. Here you go. Only, he only sells them for a buck. So these are different things here, too. Oh, last thing is the Power Bible for little kids. So Timothy would wake up in the morning when he was little at like 6 o'clock. One time he came in my bedroom. He goes, Daddy! He's knocking, on my, he's knocking on my forehead, the little boy, and he goes, Daddy, do you know how quiet it is outside? <laughs> it's beautiful outside. Can you play with me now? 
right? The joys of parenthood. We've all been there, right? So we made a rule that you have to read something before you play anything. And we got, what do you get him? A Bible. So he's sitting there reading the Bible. Little cute pictures of Jesus and the saints and the disciples. And he's reading it. He's getting into it. How cool is that to start them young? So all these different resources that are available to help our kids grow in their faith. You know, if they have an app, put Laudate on their, their, their phone. Get the USCCB, you know? Um, USCCB has daily homilies. It's wonderful that they can hear that. But different opportunities where they can grow. And then, can they do the service project together? Let me just show you about this one, too. Uh, why we took this picture, too. By the way, you can see there's a goat here. Okay? So, Timothy, we, and we get back from our trip, and Timothy, I asked him to write a journal of this trip to Bethlehem Farm. So what does he write? The first phrase he writes, my dad is a butthead for making me go to this stupid trip. <laughs> right? And then throughout the whole paper, it was so cute. He's such a butthead. I'm so tired from going to Europe, and yet we're going on this trip. We're so tired, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Complaints, complaints, complaints. Then we do this trip. And the highlight of the trip, in my eyes, and maybe Justin would disagree, disagree, was this farm was so poor that the farm barn had holes in it like this. And one of the goats got their head stuck in it and was screaming and yelling and was literally going to break their neck because their head got caught. And so our family runs to the barn, the, the farmer who was only by herself, this is a 69-year-old farmer all by herself. God bless her. And we're literally holding this goat in midair, all four of us. And it took like, I could have said three, four minutes to get his, his head loose. Now, this is not the actual goat. <laughs> we couldn't figure out which goat it was. <laughs> but the point was, we saved a life. And so at the end of this trip, here we go to the service trip for a whole week. It was hot. It was tiring. It was exhausting. It was wonderful food because it was farm food. But at the end of the trip, Timothy writes in his journal, I had the best time of my life. It was so much fun. I learned to have friends and everything. And then he ends it by, yeah, my dad's all right. He's still a butthead, but, but we had a good time on this trip. I'll take that. I'll take that. If he can grow in the Lord and he can learn to serve others. So service project together can go a long way with this. Okay. Any questions from this part with what they can do together? Service, prayer, and worshiping together. It's huge. Huge opportunity for our kids. Okay, in summary, in summary, I have a couple things to say. Uh, one last thing is final thoughts. Everyone can stop comparing. You don't have to press yourself to anyone you are impressive in God's sight. Please remember that. So again, be careful when you compare. And you know what? When I was growing up, we were always compared to this one family. And that one family was always compared to this other family. But we never said, hey, 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 those parents are better than these parents. Right? We never tried to do that. But then as I got older, remember 1.5, we sometimes fall into that trap. So you always got to be careful not to compare. And my children sometimes go, ah, 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 and I have to really listen and stop. So be careful not to compare, because it's dangerous. And it shows the kids that, that, um, that, they, that they have an inability to reach the goals, because the, the comparing never stops. Finally, uh, be open to hugs and kisses. So there's my father-in-law. And there's Caitlin and Timothy. Um, and let me just share with you, too, that after my dad died, we were in Taiwan. And I said, uh, T Josh, you make sure Timothy and Ling Ling hug Papa Lee. And she goes, no, no, no. I don't, I don't want to force them to hug them. And I looked at Josh and I said, honey, one day they won't be able to. So please, let's, let's have that habit now. Now, 
Joshua also just started hugging her dad. And I kid you not, this man would stand there like this. <laughs> and he'd get a hug. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. He'd be like this. He wouldn't even hug back. Now, look at him. He can't get enough of it. He can't get enough of it. And the point that I was going to tell the kids is, parents change too. This guy has changed. This guy has changed. Now, he might not hug me. <laughs> right? That's okay. That's okay. I give him a hug. I give him a hug. And but the point was, he loves the hugs. And he would say, bop, 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 bop. He wants the hugs now. He always wanted it. Well, everybody wants love and affection. He was just had so many things reserved, so many things hidden to, to that. So stay away, stay away. Uh -uh. That's not what he really wanted. So encourage the hugs and kisses and encourage those points where that parents change and they can make a positive difference. And my last slide is rarely said, it's so important, say the words I love you. Say the words I love you. You know, in my career, and I've been doing this for 28 years, the most messed up kids, the most screwed up kids I've had in my career are the ones who said to me, oh, blank and open honest, my parents don't love me. I don't know that. Are you kidding me? They don't love me. But yeah, yeah, right. They love me. Uh-huh. They don't know that. And in the Asian tradition, I've heard this over and over again parents. Oh, my, my kids know they, they love me. My kids don't love me. Do they? Do they really? If they haven't heard it, then how do they know? So they have, you have to share that. And I have, I have one group, a men's group, and, and I go to this men's group for the past five years, and every single one of them said they remember the first time their father and mother said that they loved them. And these were grown men! So this is a huge gift that we can give our kids. And what are the last words you want to say to your kids? I don't know you, but I want to say I love them. So this is a huge gift. Now, how do you do this? And this is the assignment that I was going to give everybody. Is when they assign the peace, did you ever notice our, our families and the sign of the peace? Well, first of all, the siblings, instead of shaking hands, what do they do? They go, <laughs> I'll touch you with one finger. Right? I mean, what are they doing? What are they doing? And then some of the parents, even, not a hug and a kiss, but a, <laughs> what are they doing? That's a sign of the peace. You know, the Catholic Church is brilliant. They give an open opportunity, an open opportunity to show the love to the loved ones that you have. And what do we do? We act like, Papa don't touch me. <laughs> right? And you see the kids run away. Now, Timothy used to run away. So what did I do? I said, Timothy, I'm not going to start the Lamb of God because I was a guitar player until you come and hug me. <laughs> right? And what I do? I try to go up to him. I give him a hug. And I whisper in his ear. I love you, Pika. I love you, my little warrior. I love you, Timothy. Because I don't want him to think I only said it once. So the homework for everybody here is when you go to Mass tomorrow and you see your family members, you say to them, hey, I love you. And I want that to be a habit that they love and cherish. Who knows? They might want to even go to Mass more. <laughs> Just to hear you say it. Well, what a wonderful gift that you can give your kids. And to show them over and over again they love them, as well as to the parents. As well as to the parents. By the way, my dad, I would say that to him too. I see the mask, I say, I love you, Papa. Why didn't Papa? I say it in Chinese. I say it in Chinese because I wanted him to know. Why? Because I couldn't say it to my mom. She was gone. She was gone 18 years earlier. So I didn't want to lose out on that opportunity. So I'd give him a hug and say, hey, why didn't Papa? I know he cherished it. I know he cherished it. So I want those cherished moments to be a part of the Catholic faith that we can grasp and love. Because it's a wonderful gift, that Catholic faith that we have. And we need to grow it in the family and make sure that we're Catholics first rather than Asians first. Rather be Catholic Asians than Asian Catholics. And that's all I have to share for this talk. Thank you.